Hello everybody, my name is The Strange Eli and welcome to another video. To continue our Pride Month series here, uh, I've decided that today we're going to be talking about comic book stuff because this channel talks a lot about comic book stuff. Specifically today we're going to be talking about not necessarily a top five, but just five really excellent um, LGBT superheroes. As a caveat, I do want to say that there are a few characters that I wanted to include but didn't really feel like I could include them purely based on the fact that they were gay because um, there have been characters that have been recently changed or edited um, that have have now become gay uh, or at least fit in the LGBT bracket um, and their stories don't necessarily support that. Uh, two examples, my two runner-ups for this list um, are uh, Calderam Aqualad who just very recently became um, gay in DC Rebirth and then Iceman, who came out as gay, I think, a year and a half, two years ago. Um, but all of his stories before that don't really support it. And in fact, in the same arc, uh, he ends up dating Kitty Pride. So it's weird that his future self, after realizing that he was gay, uh, would still be dating a woman. So the story doesn't really support it. Um, so I won't be including uh, our, Bob, our good old friend Bobby Drake, Iceman, um, because it just doesn't work. My first pick is Batwoman, um, AKA Kate Kane. Uh, she was introduced a really long time ago, like in the golden age, uh, but she wasn't she wasn't Kate Kane, I think her name was Kathy Kane, um, and she wasn't at all the kind of thing that she became. Um, but later on, um, as Detective Comics kind of reached a, a point in like the, um, I think like early 2000s, um, Kate Kane Batwoman was introduced as a fully uh, full lesbian superhero. It's actually a big part of her origin. She was in the military and she actually had to leave because of, you know, uh, the military not accepting um, gay. I guess, members. Um, and so she had to leave um, and she used her military knowledge to then become the Batwoman. Um, and she has since then uh, become a very strong, prominent uh, lesbian superhero within comic book mythos. My next pick isn't just one superhero, but it's actually a couple and that is Midnighter and Apollo. And Midnighter and Apollo is sort of uh, DC's gay analog to Batman and Superman. Um, and they very, they act kind of similarly, and they have sort of similar iconogra iconography. A lot of their stories revolve around them being together, or at least in the Midnighter solo comic, it was a lot about like, hey, I just got done with this relationship with my boyfriend Apollo, I'm trying to move on, but they all kind of lead back to Midnighter and Apollo being together. And purely based on the Midnight and Apollo miniseries that came out uh, not too long ago after Rebirth launched, that series was really, really beautiful and you got to truly see why Midnight and Apollo are so perfect together and why they kind of bounce off each other so well and why their chemistry is so believable. Um, and they uh, reading that is like, is the most low key, normal, uh, gay comic I've ever read. Um, it just made it seem like a normal relationship, which was really, really appreciated and very nice. Now this next one I've included uh, purely for the pansexual representation, but Deadpool. Um, while a lot of his stories do include him, uh, you know, kind of being with women and sometimes they kind of portray him as a womanizer, um, his pansexuality is very real and very important to that character. It's so important to the character that actually Ryan Reynolds, the guy who portrayed Deadpool in the Deadpool movie, um, did ask for uh, his pansexuality to become more prevalent in the sequel. Um, which is pretty amazing. And while he's had many, many female, you know, partnerships with uh, with Death and Rogue and, you know, uh, Psylocke and a bunch of other, you know, X characters. Um, it is important uh, to understand that Deadpool does have very strong sexual feelings for Spider-Man um, because their chemistry works off so well and Deadpool is kind of attracted to people who kind of like are like kind of reject him, you know? So uh, it's, it's definitely, it's kind of funny and it is played for laughs, but um, Wade Wilson, Deadpool, is legitimately pansexual, and it's so great to have him in a comic. The next one is Alan Scott, Green Lantern, and I've actually made another video about Alan Scott where I played Alan Scott, and the reason I did that is because I like him so much as a gay character. Um, and in fact, when I, when I made that video, I wrote the origin that he tells as a combination of his New 52 origin 
and also uh, parts of his original one um, with him going on a train to China and stuff like that. But with his boyfriend Sam was a part that was added into the New 52. Um, and it was in, while his entire history basically up to the New 52 supports him being straight, they do a very nice job of really making him feel for his uh, his long lost ex fiance, um, and he really is gay to the core, but doesn't. It's not um, flamboyant. It's just a part of who he is, and it's gorgeous in the story. And last, but absolutely not least, we have Marvel's North Star. Now, North Star is important because North Star was the first openly gay superhero. Um, of course, there were a lot of other gay superheroes or co at least comic book characters that existed before North Star, but due to the Comics Code Authority, um, the writers couldn't actually say that they were gay. So a lot of comics would portray the characters as like flamboyantly gay or obviously gay, so that way the, the reader would understand that they were gay, but they wouldn't actually say the word gay or that they the character wouldn't say that they were gay. So it obviously set the precedent for other gay superheroes to exist. After the Comics Code Authority was destroyed, they had North Star, and then from that, writers and editors were finally starting to realize that you know it's okay to include gay characters, um, and it's okay to have that kind of representation for those characters so it was it's you know North Star was really really a good thing for a gay representation in superhero media of course there are a couple other runners up that I wanted to talk about just very very briefly there's Renee Montoya who was the question uh, in DC Comics what was really great about Renee is that all of her stories leading up to DC saying that she's gay uh, really really supported the fact that she was gay so it was kind of narratively satisfying for a lot of readers who were reading her for a while it was like great now she's gay and it totally makes sense additionally there's also Sarah Lance aka White Canary from DC Legends of Tomorrow who's a really strong uh, bisexual woman uh, comic book character um, and then we also have Blackbird who is a part of the um, the Bat family in DC Comics who I believe is either lesbian or bi anyways guys that's gonna be it for this video so if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If they bring back the rating system, go ahead and give it five stars, but we all know that they won't. Uh, please subscribe and share this video with your friends, especially for Pride Month. Um, in the comments down below, tell me about your favorite superhero and, you know, just any sort of, uh, let's have a discussion about, you know, diversity versus, um, and, and using diversity for attention, which is something that Marvel seems to be kind of doing right now um, and has been doing for a little bit, but there is a legitimate discussion to be had there. So let's kind of open a dialogue and let's talk about gay comic characters because they're awesome. Um, and my Twitter is floating around here somewhere on screen and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.